The third interconnection structure we want to look at is a hypercube. A hypercube is a generalized cube. You see in our diagram there, there's a, what's called a three cube, which is just an ordinary cube. If we had a four cube, we'd have one additional dimension, and that's why it's called a hypercube. Each node is connected to all other nodes whose numbers differ from it in only one bit position. That means that in a three cube, it's connected to three other nodes, namely the ones that have the same node number except flipping each bit. Uh, so for example, if we have 0, 1, 0, it's connected to 0, 0, 0 because that flips the middle bit. It's also connected to 1, 1, 0 because that flips the left bit and to 0, 1, 1 that flips the right bit. So those are the nodes that are directly connected to a node in a hypercube. What about the metrics for a hypercube? An interconnection network be, can be either single stage or multi-stage. Well, we, what we've seen up above is a single stage interconnection network. That is to say that a node is directly connected to the next node and if it needs to go to any other node, then it needs to go via the nodes that are directly connected to it. With a multi-stage network, we have several st sets of switches in parallel, so data doesn't need to pass through the nodes on the way to the destination, just through the switches. Here's a multi-stage cube network that shows the paths from one node to another. Now each of these switches here can either be set to pass through or to cross over. So, in other words, if you set all the switches to pass through, you can connect processor 0 to memory 0. If you set all of these switches to cross over, you can connect processor 0 to memory 7. A multi-stage cube network is often called an indirect binary N cube. So that's a cube, and a cube was a very important interconnection network in the 1980s but it was soon supplanted by meshes. And so since the 1990s, cubes and hypercubes have been mainly of academic interest. The next interconnection network we'd like to look at is the perfect shuffle interconnection. This is the network whose interconnection is defined by the routing function. And you see what we're going to, what we're doing here is taking a, uh, a um, bit from the left-hand side of the node number and moving it around to the right-hand side of the node number. And that happens to be exactly what happens when we divide a card deck of, let's say, eight cards for the purposes of illustration into two halves and shuffle them perfectly. So you've got 7, 6, 5, 4, and 3, 2, 1, 0. You take one card off the top of this pile, a card off the top of that pile, then the top card on this pile, top card on that pile, and you get 7, 3, 6, 2, 5, 1, and 4, 0. So that's called a perfect shuffle because in between every two cards from one pile, there lies a card from the other pile. Okay, well, the processor interconnections required to get this transformation, notice that the what was on top before 7 remains on top. What was next on top ends up being the third node down, and then one after that, the third node down in the original pile, winds up being fifth node down here, and the four is sent over there, and the three, two, one, and zero fan out throughout the, the stack like that. So the processor and connections are seven goes to seven, six goes to five, because the card that card six goes up to, down to the fifth position, 5 goes to 3, 4 goes to 1, 0 to 0, and then you have exactly the reverses as the 1 goes up to 2, and 2 goes up to 4, and 3 goes up to 6. So those are the processor interconnections that give you a perfect shuffle. Now, if the links are bidirectional, you can also achieve an inverse perfect shuffle, which is the uh, diagram on the right, by going the opposite direction over the links. Okay? Now, a perfect shuffle interconnection by itself is not very useful, and I think I can show you why that is. A perfect shuffle, uh, if you had zero, you know, if you have zero, you just go to zero, so you're stuck at zero. 
if you have one, you can go to two, and then the next time through you were two, you go to four, you, you start out at four, you go to one, and then from one you go back to two. So basically, what this cycle does here, the one, two, four cycle, is it takes the nodes that have a single one in their node number and shifts that completely around and thereby gets to nodes one, two, and four. Now the next cycle is the nodes that have two ones in their node number, namely three, five, and six. So three goes to six, six goes to five, and five goes back to three. Then the last cycle is the nodes with three ones in their node number, which is only node seven. Regardless of how you shift it, you're still at node seven. So a shuffle exchange network, per se, is not a complete interconnection. You can't get from anywhere to anywhere else. However, you can add an exchange permutation to a shuffle network to make it into a complete interconnection structure. And what that does is flip the low order bit. And um, my goodness, I think this is wrong. I think this should be an equal sign. And also, I should have an over bar here. And I don't really have a good way to draw that. But that means basically not a zero. So you flip the least significant bit in order to get the exchange. And so what that means is that instead of just going from one to zero, or from zero, zero, one to zero, one, zero, and then one, zero, zero, you can go from, uh, from, from, let's say zero, well, from zero, one, zero to zero, one, one by doing exchange, so that gets you into this cycle. And then you could uh, flip the one bit, or flip the zero bit, and get yourself into this cycle. So that allows you to get anywhere from anywhere else. Now that, that's a kind of a single stage diagram because it shows the places you can get at each step. A shuffle exchange network is more commonly a multi-stage network. And here's the diagram that we have for a multi-stage shuffle exchange network. You can see all of the switches can be set to pass through or to cross over. So you can go from zero to uh, down here and then six, and you can stay at six. You get from zero to six by setting the first two switches to cross over and the last one to pass through. Sums or other operations involving all the elements can be performed in log n steps because you see you can bring two of the, uh, you, you can take the value at node zero and move it to node four at this step. And then at this step, you can move it to node six. And at that step, you can move it to node seven. So basically, in log n steps, you can have every element of the original vector um, uh, cross over or pass through where it needs to to meet every to to, to uh, go every other place in the network, which that allows you to do sums or other operations involving all the network, uh, all the all the elements. In addition, with the shuffle exchange network, arbitrary cyclic shifts of an n element array can be performed in log n steps. And here's the way that is. So we want to route input k to output k plus 3 mod 8. So that means we take the input 0 and we route it to 3. We take, for example, the input 3 and we're going to route it to 6. And you see how the nodes are set to do that. And input 6 and route it to 6 plus 3 mod 8, which is going to be 1. So this shows how you get up there. Now, the way we determined how to pass the switches was just by exclusive or exclusive oring the input and output port numbers. So if we wanted to get 0 to 3, we XOR 0, 0, 0 with 0, 1, 1. That gives us 0, 1, 1 and means the first switch needs to be set to pass through and the others to cross over. Let's do 2 XOR 5. So 0, 1, 0, XOR 1, 0, 1, which gives us 1, 1, 1, means to get from 2 to 5, all of the switches need to cross over, and you can see that they do. So that's the way we determine the, which way to set the switches to do this cyclic shift. The diameter of a shuffle exchange network is log n. I think you've seen that. 
you can get anywhere from any any from anywhere to anywhere in uh, log 8 which is three steps the bisection bandwidth is n 